Complex as you would expect from a highly social individual. They have been known as a pretender for forms of vocalizations, including quirks, grunts, and screams. They also use non vocal forms of communication, such as lip smacking, shoulder shrugging, and nose to nose contact. <laughs> Now, when darkness falls in the wild, the baboons will retreat to the safety of the trees. And rarely, if ever, have they been known to willingly sleep on the ground. Now, they retreat to the trees to avoid their greatest enemy, the leopard, who hunts during the night. Since man has hunted the leopard, we have seen an increase in wild baboon populations. Kiara? extinct in the wild and can now only be viewed in zoos. Wow. The breeding population has been reintroduced into Tanzania as part of a recovery program and they are surviving well for now. of all the antelope species and they are characterized by their long straight hollow horns which can reach up to one meter in length. Now despite their large size their speed is actually one of their greatest defenses against their enemies. They do also have another interesting adaptation though which are the white stripes on their sides. These are said to look like a rib cage and they are thought to pull predators into thinking that they're weak, frail and not worthy of being hunted upon. Now, 
over here on our right hand side, we are going to see the first of our ostriches. The ostrich is the world's largest living flightless bird. And even though they can't fly, they do have very powerful legs, which allow them to run at speeds of up to 65 kilometers per hour. They can maintain this speed for up to half an hour without showing any signs of fatigue. Now we have another one coming up on the left hand side. Here has the male feather for black. Now one ostrich egg can actually weigh up to four pounds and this is the equivalent in weight of about 30 chicken eggs. And contrary to popular belief, these animals don't actually bury their head in the sand. But sometimes when being pursued by predators, they will lay down and stretch out their long necks to the avoid being seen. Now, also around the left hand side here, we do have the zebra. Now, the zebra is considered the wild horse of Africa. But this being said, they are nearly impossible to train. And they have neither the speed nor the endurance, which makes the horse a friend to man. Now, the subspecies of zebra we have here today on safari is the grand zebra. And they are easily recognized by the blue black stripes, which completely encircles their bodies. Now, there has been many theories about the purpose of the zebra stripes. But one of the most common theories is that they are thought to act as a Venetian blind. With the black stripe absorbing heat, while the white stripe reflects heat. This is said to help the animal cope with the severe heat of Africa. Now over on the right hand side here we do have two different animals. The smaller shaggy brown. They are known for being excellent jumpers and climbers. Now the young which are born in the spring are soon able to jump and climb as skillfully as the adults. Now unfortunately in their native habitat they may soon become extinct as a result of overhunting. Now populations have been introduced into the canyons of the Colorado River and in two parts of California though where they are now thriving. Now also laying down among them there we do have the wildebeest. Now uh, the subspecies of wildebeest we have here today at Safari is the white bearded wildebeest and they are the most abundant animal to inhabit the Serengeti, numbering in at 1.5 million individuals. This does make the annual Serengeti wildebeest migration the second largest hoof mammal migration in the world, second only to the Mongolian gazelle. Uh, these animals are constantly on the move in search of fresh water and grass. And as such, when the young are born, they do have to be able to very quickly stand up to avoid being lost or preyed upon. They actually hold the record for the fastest hoof mammal to stand up after birth, with the record being three minutes. The young have to be able to stand up quickly to avoid being lost or preyed upon.
over on our right hand side and on our left, we do have our Rothschild or Marengo giraffes, of which there are less than 100 in North America. <laughs> now it is interesting to know that each animal does have their own unique set of spots, much like you and I have our own unique set of fingerprints. So when a giraffe is born, they can actually stand up to 6 feet in height and weigh up to 150 pounds. When full grown, they can be up to 20 feet in height and weigh anywhere between 2,200 pounds and 3,300 pounds. They are the world's tallest land animal. Now while half of their height is composed of their neck, it is interesting to note that they do actually have the same number of vertebrae as a mouse, which is seven. This being said, they do have a very large and powerful heart, which can weigh up to 24 pounds. The large size is needed to pump blood all the way up their long necks and into their brains. Oh, while well, the giraffe is quite tall and awkward looking, they actually are quite graceful animals, and they can reach speeds of up to 45 kilometers per hour. So call me They can maintain this speed for only a short period of time, but when they're running, they do look like they're moving in slow motion. Now, in the wild, the giraffe will graze off the low hanging branches of trees and they will use their long prehensile tongues to grab onto branches and pull them back into their mouths. Now the giraffe's tongue can be 18 to 20 inches in length, and they can actually use their tongue to clean out both their nose and their ears. Now, unfortunately for the giraffe, man has been their greatest enemy, as we have destroyed large tracts of their habitat. But lions, snakes, and hyenas have also had impacts on wild giraffe populations. They do derive their name from the Afrikan word by, meaning wide or square lip, and they are essentially grazing animals. They'll take 70 to 80 bites of grass per minute, chew, and then swallow. Now, white rhinos can stand up to 6 feet in height and weigh up to 5,000 pounds. They are most active in the early morning and evening hours and they do enjoy spending much of their day rolling around in the mud. Now white rhinos do have two horns, one in front of the other, and their horns are made up of a protein called keratin. This is the protein which makes up our hair and fingernails. Now unfortunately white rhinos have been hunted for many reasons, including for sport, hide, and their horns, which were once believed to have magical powers. Now the four white rhinos we have here today came from Kruger National Park in South Africa. And on the right are three females. Their names are Lenny, Fire, and Star. in with our white rhinos over here on the right we do have another small white antelope and these are the attics now the attics is also known as the screw horn antelope as they do have two to three soft curves in their horns now these animals are actually very impressive as they can go their entire lives without drinking any water they're able to do this as they do get all the moisture they need 
from the vegetation that they eat. They do also have a specialized nasal passage and kidney, which helps them conserve what little water they can find. Now, as we are exiting from this reserve today, we are going to be going over a set of cattle grades, and this is going to cause a few small bumps. Now, we use the grades here on Safari to keep our host animals, such as the zebra and the antelope, in their respective reserves, as these gates are left unattended all day long. Australasia Reserve. Now this reserve, I would just like to remind everyone to please remain seated while the bus is moving, as the roads in these next two reserves can get quite bumpy. some of our kangaroos. Now we have both kangaroos and wallabies here at Safari. And both of these animals are marsupials, which does Now over on our right hand side here, we do have another rhino. This is a greater one horned. Greater one horned rhino is also known as the Indian rhino and they are the largest of all the Asian rhino species. Now, Naboo does have thick brown skin, which is heavily layered over his body making it look like he's wearing a suit of armor. Compared to our white rhinos, you guys also have only one horn. The horn is present on both males and females, but not on newborns. The horn will begin to develop when the animal is about six years old. Now, despite Naboo's large size, he can actually reach speeds of up to 50 kilometers per hour. It can only maintain the speed, though, for a very short period of time. Now, despite their aggressive reputation, rhinos actually are quite friendly. They have been known to greet each other by nuzzling noses or bobbing their heads. They have also been seen playfully running around with twigs in their mouths. They do get that aggressive reputation for charging, though, as they actually are very short-sighted. They can't see very well, so when they do get startled, they do tend to run into things. They do, though, have very keen senses of hearing and smell. Now over on the right hand side there, you will get a quick look at some of our camels. We have two types of camels here today. Bactrian, which have two humps, and Dromedary, which have one hump. That is their off-show housing. Those tawny brown antelope are the Nilgai. 
Uh, the male guy is the largest of all the Indian antelopes, and they are characterized by the two white rings around their feet, which make it look like they're wearing a pair of socks. Uh, the group we're looking at here today is consisted only of females and their offspring, and we can tell as they are all a tawny brown in color. The males, by comparison, are a much darker gray color, and in some lights they are said to look blue. This is actually how the Nil guy got their name, as Nil is a word for blue and guy a word for cow. Now also on the left here, the big shaggy animals are a type of ox known as the yak. Now the yak is native to Tibet, but they actually are a beast of burden. There's some ox still later. With their big, thick, shaggy coats, they can actually survive in temperatures of negative 40 degrees Celsius. They can easily handle our cool Canadian winters. Over here on the right hand side, at the back of their enclosure here today, we do 